Batman experience. Batman experience. Batman experience. Batman experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings. The Week 8 Weekend Update with the DraftKings Ownership, the top props, plus the full injury report and rankings update for you, the good people out there. If you just want the cheat sheet for the injuries or the rankings, hit the description. They're both in the newsletter and on DraftKingsNetwork.com. All the cheat sheets are actually in the newsletter as well for betting, props, best bets, whatever it might be. So it's free to join. So you might as well go do that in the Run the Sims Prop Sniper and Full DFS package, whichever package that you want. Get 10% off at runthesims.com with code Mayo. Code Mayo at shipitnation.com also gets you 10% off all packages. However, you don't need a package to watch Tambo and crew go live 9.45 a.m. Eastern time on Mayo Media Network Sunday morning, answering your questions and going over the main slate for DFS with all of the updated injury news. I'll be live with Custom Garion at 7.15 p.m. Eastern time later on in the night, recapping the week and looking forward to week number nine, almost halfway home in the football season. So let's get some money and let's get started with that injury report for the week, starting at running back. Try to make this quick. David Montgomery is out for the Lions on Monday Night Football. All the Jameer Gibbs, a little bit, a little dash of Craig Reynolds in showdown, but for your season long, no one cares. There's no buys, not a big deal. Jerome Ford returned to practice on Friday in a limited capacity. He is a game time decision. I still do not have him in the rankings. I do not think that he is going to play because why would you? But it seems like it's a low ankle sprain instead of a high ankle sprain. I currently have Kareem Hunt as the better option over Lucky Pierre Strong. When you take a look at the props and you take a look at the projections, Kareem Hunt is going to rate up pretty highly because no one is really factoring in that Jerome Ford is going to play. Here's the issue with Jerome Ford this week. It's a late game. There's only four of those late games. So for DraftKings purposes, no one's going to swap onto him. However, if you've been using Kareem Hunt in your lineups because he's a discount price at running back at 5200 bucks. that if Jerome Ford is active, how much Kareem Hunt do you really want to play? Not much, right? So you need a backup plan. Keep that in mind if we do not know the status of Ford on Sunday morning until lock. Like, if we get it before lock, then we can make all the decisions, whatever. But even for your season-long lineups, if you're playing Kareem Hunt, something that I am doing, make sure to put him in the flex if you can, just to give yourself more options based on the limited amount of games that are left. I think he's a good play if Ford sits. I have no idea what kind of play he is if Ford is active in this game. And we'll see in terms of the prop sniper and some of the new tools that were added to the prop sniper. Just more. For whatever whatever you paid for the prop sniper, it's got more tools coming in throughout the course of the season. Little add-ons. Don't cost anything. Same price as always. But in terms of the first touchdown market and touchdown market, like his odds are going to severely damper if Jerome Ford is in. It just has to, if that's the way that it turns out. So be very wary of that. Hopefully we get clarity and information and maybe Tambo and crew can go over that on Sunday morning. The other one to watch out for is Zach Moss. He is a game time decision as well. He is also expected out. So in terms of DraftKings ownership and Jonathan Taylor, I've taken Moss out of my rankings and moved Jonathan Taylor to number 10 in a tougher matchup, albeit against the Saints, but he's been so involved in the receiving game. Uh, and again, in the anytime touchdown market, Trey Sermon would then become the backup for the Colts and probably get a little bit of run because it's not like Taylor's going to play 100% of the snaps. His anytime touchdown is 18 to 1. Issue is, Zach Moss might play. Fortunately, that is an early game, so we will know his status going into our lineups locking, our decisions needing to be made. Kareem Hunt is going to play. Roshan Johnson is also going to play. He practiced this week. He has passed concussion protocol. He is going to be in. I expect Foreman to still be the lead in this offense. However, between Evans and Johnson, no one's really that great of a play, to be perfectly honest with you. The juice on one and a half under receptions for Donta Foreman is juiced up to like minus 160 now, and the prop sniper is still saying it's a good play at this point. Zach Chalbanet is in. Still not playing him, and I don't think it affects Kenneth Walker all that much, who's also playing. Bijan Robinson expected to be in, and Colonel Raheem Mostert is expected to play. There was some buzz about an increased workload for Jeff Wilson in that game as well. At wide receiver, 
LaVisca Chenault is out for the Panthers. Zay Jones is out for the Jaguars, so it means another Christian Kirk week. That's always good news. Justin Ross is suspended. He is out for the Kansas City Chiefs. However, Justin Watson is expected to play after his elbow injury that was sustained against Denver on Thursday Night Football a few weeks back. So that's a positive move on their front because Justin Watson is way better than Justin Ross at this point. He's still actually one of their better downfield threats. No idea how much he's going to play. Robert Woods is out for the Texans. Great news for Tank Dell, who is playing and just to concentrate that offense a little bit more on Friday's show I discussed with Tambo like Bryce Young that side of the stack with some bringbacks from Houston maybe the Houston stack with a bringback from Carolina I actually have I, I didn't have a ton of interest at the time I have far more interest now because you can play Stroud with Nico and Schultz or Tank and Schultz or Tank and Nico whatever it might be from the Texan side and then bring it back with Thielen from the other side or if you want to play Bryce Young and Thielen and because this game is going to be so popular now at least I expect it to be popular Damian Pierce is just sitting there no one's really using Damian Pierce this week. That if you wanted leverage in that game, that would be the way to go. That maybe the Texans win, but they run all over Carolina. I actually think I like Carolina plus three and a half now at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's gone from three to three and a half, which is a big jump that I actually like the three and a half in this game for Carolina. I think it's going to be a lot closer coming off the bye for both teams than a lot of people think. More receivers. Debo Samuel expected to be out. No surprise there. Tower Lockett is expected to be in. DK Metcalf is off the injury report, so he playing. Tyree Kill is expected to be a full go. Ditto for Christian Watson and the Packers after it looked like he was going to miss a few weeks. So the rankings have all been adjusted. Christian Watson comes in at number 31. Tyreek's number one. He's number one until he's not number one. If he's playing, he's number one. It's not like you're, if it came down to, hey, I could sit Tyreek Hill for, no, you're not sitting Tyreek Hill. That would be stupid. Juju is expected to be in, so I've dampened my ranking on Kendrick Bourne a little bit. Just games where Juju has been active, Bourne just simply is not on the field as much. It's just a 1v1 situation. Chris Moore is still questionable with a concussion, although he has passed protocol and he is expected to play. I've just, and with Will Levis and Malik Willis, like, splitting time at quarterback for the Titans, like, no thanks. It's going to be a ton of running in that game. Brevin Jordan at tight end is out for the Texans. Another reason why I do like the Texans a little bit more just especially Dalton Schultz just fewer people to take away potential targets or red zone opportunities we still have like Quintero or whatever the hell that guy's name is to steal touchdowns from Sergeant Schultz but it'll be fine Ky Kylan Granson is out for the Colts Luke Musgrave returned to practice on Friday still a game time decision that is an early game between the Packers and the Vikings so you'll know you probably don't need to play him but for DraftKings purposes maybe you want to throw in a cheap tight end Everett, Gerald Everett, Jerry Everett for Sunday Night Football is expected to play. And then you have Greg Dulcich placed on IR again. Fryermuth and Dawson Knox were both placed on uh, IR this week as well. And Zach Ertz was placed on IR too. Quarterbacks, I don't know how Dirty Purdy ended up getting cleared but he's cleared to play he's starting for the san francisco 49ers against the cincinnati Bengals. no sam darnold this week as of right now i guess the potential if he takes a big hit of coming out of this game is big but good for that offense uh, so he's back in the rankings he's number 10 one spot behind kirk cousins in the weekly rankings jimmy g is in kyler murray was not activated he will not play deshaun watson is out pj walker is starting justin fields is out old uncle teabag is starting Ryan Tannehill is out. Will Levis will see the start, but Malik Willis will factor into that as well. That, I mean, Will Levis isn't good anyway, so he's last in the quarterback rankings, but the fact he might even be playing the whole game uh, is not great news for his fantasy upside in this spot. Uh, and Daniel Jones is out with a neck injury. Again, I'll have this updated in the newsletter. You can find the link down in the description right now. Okay, thank you. Let's go over to runthesims.com and check out the prop sniper right now. Um, the big one that I am playing is Nick, Nick Westbrook Ikena, although the Lamar Jackson rushing yards at Unibet, wherever the hell that is, uh, are actually better than anything else. But you can see these Nick Westbrook Ikena odds are some of the best on the board right now, and it is not fun to play any of these. I've placed a pretty sizable wager. I put it in the newsletter. I mean, a sizable wager for me. I'm sure it's peanuts to other people. I'm sure it's way too much for other people. But you're getting plus money at most places right now. I mean, the odds have actually deteriorated since I last checked this about an hour ago. But Nick Westbrook, Ikena, under one and a half receptions at plus 135 is a 67% winner. That gives it a 25 score by the numbers. And that line is basically available everywhere. DraftKingsportsbook.com has it. I did try the 
receptions under parlay with the yardage parlay, but it only bumped it up to plus 175, which I didn't feel like was worth the risk when you're getting plus money on this anyway. So there's just a bunch of different factors to actually consider, and you can see how the simulations are made if you go into the sim runner. Now, obviously, you don't have access to the sim runner if you only have the prop sniper package, but, I mean, it's really irrelevant unless you really want to go back and check the work of what's going on. You can see the Atlanta-Tennessee game. What are we doing for Tennessee? Well, as you can see, Traylon Burks is going to be back for this game. Well, that's good news and probably takes away from playing time from Nick westbrook Ikena. Kyle Phillips is going to be active. Chris Moore is expected to be active as well. So the last two games, I mean, it's not like Nick westbrook Ikena has really been over this number a ton anyway, but there's a few different factors that you have to put in to this prop of under one and a half. If they just decide to throw bubble screens to him the entire game, it's going to lose immediately. And under sweats are no fun, but he had three catches in the London game. There was no trail in Burks in that game. And Chris Moore left in that game after sustaining a concussion. And Ryan Tannehill played most of that game. So now you have two shitty quarterbacks that are potentially throwing the ball. I'm sure it's going to be a very run-heavy script, especially if the defense can make this somewhat close. I expect to see it a little bit of what we saw with Malik Willis against the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football uh, last year, I think it was, where they're just going to try to run. They're going to go deep on certain plays, and hopefully that hits and they can get the score early and then try to play tough run D and run the ball as much as possible and shorten this game down. That could lead to more bubble screens. Yes, Will Levis, when we saw him in the preseason, was god-awful. But here's really the kicker. With Burks and Moore back, let's just take the two games that Burks was out and one of them Chris Moore played and one of them he left halfway through the London game in the week before that because the Titans are coming back off of bye. Nick westbrook Ikena in total in those games, only had four catches. So we had three in one game and one in the other. So one over, one under, you're getting plus money. So even if we just play the law of averages, we're coming out ahead if we bet it every single week at this number anyway. However, he only saw 13% of the team's target share down to receivers with him playing like every snap on the field. So you would have to expect that number to come down a little bit. He still only saw 13% of the team's air yards in those games as well. So I get the want to same game parlay these together. And frankly, it might be pretty good because if we go back and look at it and take a look at Nick, Nick Westbrook Ikena in the prop sniper and we see reception yards under 19 and a half pops out as well because uh, his medium projection is nine. His overall projection is 15, both below those numbers, a 71% winner, but you're paying more vig on it. And you you have to take some things into consideration that if we do see a very high A dot game where you know Levis and Malik Willis come in and they're like, hey, you know, it's third and seventeen anyway. Let's throw it sixty yards down the field. See what happens. Maybe he catches one of those. Maybe he has one catch for sixty one yards or something like that. And you're like, oh. Now I lost when I could have just bet the under. He probably ends up with zero catches. Like, that's very much on the table. And like if he's going to win, he's probably going to win with two, not like seven or anything like that. So just keep that in mind going forward. It is not fun to sweat a one and a half reception under. Trust me on that. But that is where I am going this week. The other thing that I wanted to reveal here is the new tool that we have released. Once again, runthesims.com, code Mayo, 10% off. It's like 13 bucks a week, and then you can get 10% off. The best value, I think, is the monthly 39 uh, and if you bet a ton of props you should really be using this but if we go to filters you can see first touchdown that is a new market that we've put in for the sims and all this really tells us daryl henderson is one of the most positive ones on the board with a 4.7 score that is really bad all this illuminates really is that the first touchdown market takes so much hold it's really not worth playing ever now there are some positive values that's fine. Uh, and you can go in on that. It's not like I'm going to stop playing the first touchdown market because there's a ton of hold. I bet golf outrights every week. That's an even worse market to bet into because uh, it's just a pure lottery. But it does like Dar Daryl Henderson to score the first touchdown. Uh, let's see, 12.3% of the time in that Rams and Cowboys game. You can get 12 to 1 odds at DraftKings Sportsbook right now, which is you know, better than 12%. So that's the route that you would want to go with. The only other ones that are kind of positive, Cortland Sutton in that Denver KC game, which is supposed to be cold, might have snow in it. Uh, that's 17 to 1. Those aren't terrible odds. And then it's a bunch of Kareem Hunt odds at 8 to 1, which is really good. Unless Ford is active, then that's a terrible bet because that wins around 16% of the time per the Sims. But if you throw in Jerome Ford, then all of a sudden that probably gets cut to like 8% or 9%. And then it would be a negative play. So be cognizant of that if you're going into it. Uh, the other one I talked about was Trey Sermon. In case, in case you do see Zach Moss sit, just it's 80 to 1 
uh, in 75 to one at DraftKings right now that, you know, for 10 bucks, five bucks, whatever it is, you might want to take a flyer on that. Uh, ditto for the anytime TD market. If that's the way that you want to go do it, because you can see uh, Caesars has some like wonky odds. So don't pay attention to that. Yeah. If you could get Brees all a hundred to one uh, anytime touchdown, I would say that you'd bet it. Our API can't scrape out these like weird listings that Caesars post. And it's only ever Caesars. So fuck off Caesars. Get some better APIs in you. So we just scroll down and go to like real odds. Uh, Daryl Henderson, anytime touchdown, plus 210. Uh, you can also get it at plus 180, plus 200, depending on where you shop. That has a 47% chance of hitting in this game per the simulation. So it's assumed it would be good all the way down to like plus 125. Honestly, plus 120 it would still be a value in that market. Uh, at DraftKings, the anytime TD on Trey Sermon is 19 to 1. Anytime touchdown. It's unlikely to happen. However, if he's going to end up getting, I mean, let's see what we have him in for in the Sim Runner in terms of where we have him projected at the moment. I mean, Jonathan Taylor becomes a great play. And we have him for 65% of the rushing share. Trey Sermon at 23%. We have him at 15% of the touchdown market. So Jonathan Taylor will score a touchdown. Basically, Trey Sermon has about as good of a chance of scoring a touchdown on the ground as Gardner Minshew does which is not nothing. Gardner Minshew scored a touchdown last week. And all of a sudden, you can get yourself 19 to 1 odds on that. So that's not even something I would have considered, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but it just kind of popped off the page to me. And I was very surprised about that, is all I'm saying. Finally, let's talk about the DraftKings ownership. Once again, the ownership will get better after inactives have been, like, it'll get updated again Sunday morning, then it'll get updated again Sunday afternoon before lock. But right now, these are the highest projected owned players on the slate. Brees Hall, Isaiah Pacheco, Zay Flowers, Christian McCaffrey, Tony Pollard, Alvin Kamara, Tyree Kill, Tank Dell because of that price point, and no Robert Woods at $4,900 is skyrocketing up. DeAndre Swift, Brandon Ayuk, Trey McBride at 14% as like the super cheap donk off option at, and I'm actually curious to see where uh, the other dude ends up coming in. Uh, like Connor Hayward uh, with Fryermouth on IR. Now that's becoming a better play now that the discrepancy between Trey McBride and Hayward is so pronounced. Earlier when Tambo and I did the show on Friday, when McBride was projected at 8% and Hayward was projected at 6%, I mean, I just like objectively McBride better. You can see he's projected for more points anyway. Uh, although his points per dollar is still much higher, but now we're getting to the optimal percentage where his optimal leverage is in the negatives, where Hayward's is slightly in the positives and you know it's a $200 break from McBride to Hayward although if you're using Hayward at 2800 at tight end in saving the 200 bucks might be irrelevant to you who knows um but anyway that's what's really shaking out at tight end it's McBride then Ferguson Hawkinson and Kelsey I honestly think Dalton Schultz is probably the best play I know the Sims don't say that right now they say he's a negative leverage but without Robert Woods I just I like his touchdown equity and I like his target equity in this game we talked about the running backs at receiver so Zay Hill Flower uh Flowers Hill, Tank Dell, Ayuk, Jamar Chase, Deontay Johnson, who will be playing in this game, Addison, and George Pickens. Uh, I like Brandon Powell a lot uh, in as a pivot in that game as a cheap price. $3,200 for Minnesota. Uh, points per dollar wise comes in great per the simulations. You know, no one is going to play this guy. Projected ceiling around 20 points. Projected base of almost 11 points, which is not nothing, which means he's basically going to show up in every optimal lineup if you use an optimizer. By that regard, you can see his optimal rate is 6.5%, which is pretty incredible for a $3,200 player. Uh, once we put Juju into the simulation on Sunday morning, then Kendrick Bourne's numbers are going to go down. But Powell points per dollar wise is by far the best play at receiver on the board right now. Then Bourne, then McLaurin, Thielen, Addison, Ayuk, and then Noah Brown, who's stepping into that Robert Woods role for the Houston Texans, or it might be Omichi Premier. We'll see. Uh, but Noah Brown, dead min, comes in the optimal lineup around 4.8% of the time. I still, if Powell was going to be owned like 13%, I would just play Noah Brown, but at 3%, who cares? Uh, I have far more faith in Powell since I've actually seen him do it before. Uh, running backs wise, if we take a look at the points per dollar, it's going to be Jonathan Taylor. He's off the charts right now. His projected ownership is 14%. But again, the Zach Moss news is still a bit unknown. If Zach Moss is declared out early on Sunday morning, that number is going to go to like 24%, 25 percent um whatever it might be uh, but the five top five points per dollar plays taylor camara Hall, 
Kareem Hunt and Isaiah Pacheco. Then it's McCaffrey, despite how big of a price tag that he has. I really like this Pollard and Ichen tier, although it seems like no one is playing Ramondre Stevenson. Um, 5% ownership, and he actually rates out pretty well, too, against Miami, especially if that's catch-up mode. They don't throw to Zeke a ton, and they want to get Ramondre back in. Just that offense has been so untrustworthy. It's kind of ridiculous. And then if we take a look at quarterbacks, uh, ownership-wise, it's going to be Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. You know, when the top quarterbacks go off one week, expect all of the ownership to gravitate towards the top, although there's not a huge disparity uh, between much of what's going on here. Cheap-wise, the cheapest one who's getting a lot of buzz is Kenny Pickett. That's only 4% ownership. I like Ritter. I played some Russell Wilson lineups. I'm curious to see where Brock Purdy ends up coming in. Says around 7% at $5,600. I just like Joe Burrow. I'm going to play a ton of Joe Burrow. Burrow. McCaffrey, Chase, and then I talked about a whole bunch of values uh, that you can go to. I don't even actually know who defensively uh, is coming in. Falcons, Seahawks, Vikings, Bengals. That actually tracks a ton. I do like the Jags a bit. Uh, if we see points per dollar, the Vikings at $2,500 are the best play, followed by the Jags, Seahawks, Bengals, Falcons, and that would be the ownership that goes along with them. Then actually the Commanders against Philadelphia at $2,300. If you desperately need a punt, they seem to at least project to be the best of the cheap options at defense on DraftKings this week. And if we do just generate five lineups to see how the optimals end up coming out, we ran the simulation 10,000 times. Oh, actually, I upped a, a bunch of builds here. Let's see. Hertz. Kamara, Taylor, Kendrick Bourne, Thielen, Brandon Powell, Trey McBride, Travis Kelsey, and Vikings D has the best total projection and still leaves $100 on the table. I don't know if I love that lineup. There's not a lot of correlation in that lineup by any means, but you can see Jalen Hurts really does get spit out as like the play this week at quarterback, which is not great because I have no Jalen Hurts lineups always fun when you have none of the guy who's projected to be the optimal quarterback in a lot of these lineups. No, friends, I am playing Joe Burrow in my main lineup and Desmond Ritter in my second main lineup in other single entry formats. So expect me to lose a lot this week or win a lot. I hope it's one of those weeks where I win a lot. That'd be great. Anyway, that will do it on the Pat Mayo Experience. Smash the like, play in the giant one and done for golf. That's now available. That's down in the description right now. 200 bucks to play this year. You can have up to five entries, but there's now $80,000 to first prize and almost 60,000 to second place. The flat payouts across the board and it's 200 bucks for the year from January to the end of August. So it's like six bucks a week or something silly like that. So just don't get overwhelmed by it. Go get your spot because it does it won't fill. No one's in it. No one's in it. No one's in it. No one's in it. Then it's full all of a sudden. So just reserve your spot to make sure that you're in. 9.45 a.m. Eastern with Tambo and friends. Sunday morning on MMN. Then me, Custom Gary, and the old school crew live 7.15 p.m. Eastern time here on Mayo Media Network. Smash like and make sure to sub to the channel. All right. I'm Pat Mayo. Good luck this week. I'll see you next time. <laughs>